Praise be, Jesus and Mary. I'm David Rodriguez, Content Director of the Fatima Center, joined again by Father Lawrence Carney, who has authored books on the devotion to the Holy Face. He's been teaching us much about this devotion, and we're very grateful to have him on again. Welcome, Father. Thanks for having me back, our Mr. Rodriguez. It is good to have you. And, you know, we've had a lot of different questions come up. First of all, let me just say interest. So I'm uh, grateful for that, that more and more people are praying this devotion. And we are getting comments, uh, even, you know, third order religious people have written into the Fatima Center on account of your videos. So uh, a big thank you to you, Father. You're welcome. Thanks be to God. Also, a reminder before I forget, for those of you who may not have it, this is Father's book on the Holy Face. So you can get that. We will put uh, details on that in the show more notes. Uh, there's also another wonderful little prayer book that I like that's the Manual of the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face. So I wanted to make sure I had those here in the video so people could see them and I wouldn't forget about them. Uh, with those sort of announcements out of the way, to one of the most important questions regarding this devotion, Father, and that is just the basic concept of reparation. Uh, we certainly have talked about this in the videos already, and it is a very important concept, just reparation in general, but it's not emphasized enough, and few Catholics talk about it. It's also central to the message of Fatima. Why do you think that is, that we don't talk about it so much? Yeah, one of the reasons is because we've had our focus too much centered on man, and it's taken away the reverence and the adoration that we owe to God. And that's part of the synthesis of the heirs is the modernism heresy that we're living in. And that has spilled over into how people act as Catholics. And I, I find this even on the streets. So many people tell me, well, this is how God really is when it's totally off base of the catechism. It's, it's, an, it's an eminentism that comes from within saying that the truth comes eminently from with, with what I think and what I say. And so we do well to go back to our traditions and to see actually how has God revealed his divinity to us? And we need to focus on the fact that as Jesus said, uh, you're, you know, God is good and that's it. You know, we're not good, but God is. And anything that we do that is good doesn't really come from us. It's an inspiration that comes from God, from the Holy Spirit. And so when people, um, you know, say that I've written this or that or done something good, the, the worst thing I can do is to take all the credit for myself without giving it to God. So reparation is an idea that we have been stealing the honor that belongs to God to for ourselves, and that causes nothing more than pride. So reparation has so many fruits. If people live it out according to our Catholic heritage, and that is to repair the damage between our God and our human family. So Our Lady of Fatima, the message also to Sister Mary St. Peter and the messages of the Holy Face is a clarion call from heaven reminding us, wait a minute, uh, you folks on earth, you don't quite have the relationship right. You got to get more focus and stress on reparation. Uh, definitely. I agree with that, Father. In fact, one thing just to remind all our viewers on, because this is something to definitely pray for, and that's that when Our Lady of Fatima gave us her message, she didn't just talk about the need for the Pope in union with all the bishops to consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart, but she also requested the devotion of reparation that is commonly known as the First Saturday devotion. She attached special blessings for those who do five consecutive First Saturdays. But again, that's a devotion of reparation. And she wants that promulgated throughout the church, you know, by the Pope, by bishops in their diocese. And so in every effort that has been made to do something, whether it be an entrustment or a consecration of the world or anytime there's been some kind of, let's just say, consecration to Our Lady of nations, of Russia, what have you, 
one of the elements that's always been missing is this repertory devotion of the first Saturdays. And that's why I was thinking, you know, along the lines of this devotion, that the more people become familiar with the Holy Face devotion and the need for reparation, then that they might also start thinking, oh, over here, Our Lady is also talking about reparation for the sins committed against her Immaculate Heart. Um, yeah, this is very good because I think you've mentioned it before, how the different devotions and private revelations, they, they're all connected. And I just started praying the the prayer of the angel that, you know, was preceding Our Lady of Fatima a couple nights ago. I started praying it. I'm like, this prayer mirrors the golden arrow prayer. And it talks about reparation, both of them. And it's neat because I've been thinking lately that heaven's giving us all these different types of devotions for different personalities. You know, it's sort of like in the military. Some people are supposed to go to the special ops. Some people are supposed to go to the Navy SEAL. Some people are supposed to be infantry. And that's what's neat is having is given us these different stresses for each personality. So one of the stresses of the devotion to Holy Face is constantly reparation. It's all the time. The manual that you just showed us at the beginning of this interview that has the comprehensive, most comp yeah, the one right there, the, the most comprehensive list of the prayers for the devotion to the Holy Face I read it from cover to cover uh, throughout the year, and it's 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 reparation every day, <laughs> and that's what's so neat about it. Yeah, I don't know what you think about this, Father, but as you were talking, one thing that just hit me is I think another reason maybe why we're so disconnected from the concept of reparation is that we've had this great error seeping into our culture for centuries now. You can call it uh, the Liberté, Galité, Fraternité, the French Revolution, the democratization, the basically making everyone very equal, yeah. the flattening of our society and thereby also destroying the hierarchy that God creates. Right. And I think I am more compelled to offer reparation because I recognize that infinite majesty of God, how high above me he is and therefore how my offenses how terrible they are. I mean, I'm so struck by St. Teresa of Avila. I was just telling this to my daughter the other day, and she just, her eyes got really big. And St. Teresa of Avila says, it would be worse for one venial sin to be committed, venial, than for the whole world to be destroyed. And I was reminding her and myself that we don't think of the heinousness of sin in this way, right? We need more faith for that. But the more we understand just how terrible our sin is, and that comes in connection with the infinite majesty of God, how much we've offended him, then we realize, well, just conversion and just amending my life, albeit as important as that is and a necessary first step, I also now have to offer reparation. Um, so I think if we had more a concept of maybe kings or the hierarchy of a structure, um, we would recognize the, the need for reparation more in, in other aspects of our society. And then we could translate that into the spiritual life and our relationship with God. But since we're missing that in our society, we can't seem to also make the connection to, to our spiritual lives. Sure. So the revolution is trying to promote a thing called egalitarianism. And that is a notion where there's no hierarchy. Everything is, is equal. So that really destroys a certain sense of trying to live out a life of excellence. Like there's different rewards for different things that we do, or even for having a certain amount of charity. In heaven, there's different levels. There's different levels in hell. There's different levels in the uh, you know, the uh, human kingdom with different intelligences, beauty and stuff like that. But when the devil tries to take out egalitarianism, then it makes people have a lack of a sense to excel in life. And what came to mind when you were talking is one of the patrons of the Arch Comfortry of the Holy Faith is St. Louis, the King of France. Yeah. And there was totally the idea and the notion of hierarchy there. He was told by his mother, um, Blessed Blanche, that if he were ever to consider committing a mortal sin, he, he would, it would be better for him to die instead. So there's this sense of reparation that King Louis had and that, you know, benevolent Catholic monarchy, monarchies were so good about teaching 
their subjects. And, and another thing that a lot of people don't realize is that France was the most prosperous and peaceful underneath the reign of King Louis the Ninth. So we have to remember that hierarchy, the way that Jesus Christ set it up in his church is, is, is like a monarchy with the Pope and with the bishops and the way that structure is. So we have great examples in the secular world with King Louis the Ninth and other King Fernando the Third and, and other kings. So that egalitarianism, that's the devil trying to destroy hierarchy that God has given to us from above. Yes, in fact, King Ferdinand and King St. Louis were cousins. So what a wonderful time to be living. I mean, that's when the great cathedral of Chartres is going up. St. Thomas Aquinas is doing his thing. And I do love that quote by Queen Blanche because my wife and I say it often to our children. Uh, I believe the quote, at least as the way I learned it, was she would tell her son, St. Louis the Ninth, I rather see you dead at my feet than commit a mortal sin. <laughs> and so in the Rodriguez household, every child has heard that a number of times. What a mother. They hear that. <laughs> What a great mother. Um, well, so one other question I had here, this came from one of our viewers, and that's a lot of times we as human beings seeing things from the human perspective and not the divine perspective, as you mentioned earlier, maybe focus more on man. I think we, even good Catholics, will tend to be horrified and focus more on the gross violations that are taking place these days regarding, we could say, the second tablet of the commandments, you know, commandments four through 10. Especially we can think of here of all the sins against life that comes with the culture of death, um, sins against the sixth commandment, seventh, eighth. And people really sort of realize how evil those are and they want to fight against them, you know, with this pro life culture. Is it possible, this viewer asks, that if we make reparation to God in his holy face for sins committed against the first three commandments, which is obviously what this devotion is about, those are the violations against God directly. Do you then think that God would help us in the fight against the pro-death culture of our world? Can we make headway against commandments four through 10 by actually you know, making reparation to the other three? And are we not making headway against the other seven because we're not making sufficient reparation to our Lord? Yeah, it's a good question. And the simple answer, and I'll explain more after I give it, is if we can't get the first three commandments right, how can we get the, the last seven right? Because the first ones deal with God. So if we don't get the ones with God right, then there's how can we get abortion and adultery right? So we have to start with the highest part in the hierarchy, and that's God. And then man comes below that. So I think our problem is that we live in a society of materialism. So we do tend to be more angered when we see sins against the last seven commandments because we're seeing physical things like trafficking is horrible, abortion is horrible, but we don't see God because he's pure spirit. So okay. it's easier for a modern man to make the mistake of the grave error that, okay, God doesn't really care about us worshiping him on Sundays, you know, because people don't really see anything visibly happening that's wrong. But what happens when someone misses Mass on Sunday on purpose and they're Catholic, that's a mortal sin. That kills their soul. It kicks God out of their soul. And that's really bad. So I think that this devotion was given to us by God so that he could stress in the Old Testament when people would start following the first three commandments, then God would start to engage in the war and fight the war for them. But if we don't get the first three commandments or even just all 10 right, then God's going to let our enemies um, put, put us underneath their thumb and we're going to get underneath their power. And that's what Venerable Leo de Pont said when he saw the Communist Manifesto uh, a few months after it was published. He read it and he said, oh, if they do everything they want here, then the whole world's going to be enslaved to them. And it's just like the Israelites that were enslaved in Egypt. You know, that's probably one of the worst times for the people of God in all the ages. You know, we live in pretty bad times, but we're not all enslaved yet. And that's why this devotion is here. So we can be reminded, let's read some of the stories in the Old Testament of what happens to the people that repent, do reparation, and follow the, all the commandments of God, they will be blessed, and God will fight the war for us. 
So it's nothing new. It's just the Old Testament, and God's just re- revealing it to us again in, a, in our times, and he's stressing who the enemy is. What's And the enemy is revolutionary men, communists, Freemasons, free thinkers, et cetera, et cetera. Well, thank you for that, Father. I guess the last thing I would ask here in conclusion is just if you could remind all of our viewers, what can we do to offer reparation? That's been the theme here. And so someone who is new, maybe hasn't seen some of the other episodes, might be asking that question. Uh, what can we do to offer reparation to our Lord? So we can do all kinds of things. We can attend Mass, make it a Mass of reparation. We can make a holy hour, make it a holy hour of reparation. We can say a rosary, if not one decade of the rosary, maybe all five for reparation. So we make the intention and do the prayers, the chapel of the holy face. We can do litanies for reparation. There's two litanies in the manual, the arch confraternity of the holy face. There's all kinds of prayers in the manual. Um, Blessed Pius IX has written a beautiful prayer. St. Francis has written a prayer. We can, even when we suffer, we can offer it up as reparation. When we're sick, like you mentioned, you had a cold. We can definitely make reparation. In fact, it's better when we don't try to put a penance on us, which is a good thing, but when it's given to us by God's hand and we didn't put it upon ourselves, that's a great time to make reparation. Whenever someone blasphemes out loud, we can make reparation either in our hearts or out loud too, like, Sit nomen domine benedictum, blessed be the name of God. So I can go on and on, but that's just a, a brief um, summary of how we can make reparation. Well, that does make it very simple, Father. Am I correct then, just in saying to our viewers, a lot of it just has to do with your intention? Whatever it is that you're going through, whether they be prayers or penances, the ones we choose, or as you said, the ones that happen to us, even our daily duty, just fix the intention and offer that up with you know a, quiet, a brief prayer, as you just mentioned, that you want to offer this in reparation, and, and that in fact suffices? Yeah, because people can make prayers for mercy. They can make prayers for justice. Well, this devotion is stressing, let's make prayers for reparation so that we we can try to do our best to turn the situation of the the world, the elites, and all that they're promising to, to do evil that they're doing to want to do to us. Yes, that's it. Just making the intention of a reparation, stressing that. So how easy God makes it for us. He, he truly is wonderful. Praise God for that. And as a reminder to all our viewers, also we have those seven Fatima prayers. We just put out the Fatima prayer card. Although all of them are prayers of reparation, one very specifically mentions that, which Our Lady taught, where, oh, Jesus, I offer this up, whatever it is that you're offering up for love of thee, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So that's actually my favorite prayer, especially on First Saturday when I pray the rosary or the meditation or go to confession or am going up in line to receive Holy Communion. I like to pray that prayer and put in the act to make sure that my first Saturday is going towards this reparation. Mm -hmm. If uh, Father, you'd do us the, uh, please close us with prayer, maybe your blessing. Sure. Benedictio Domini Potentis, Patris et Filii, Spiritus Ancindit, Super Vos et Maniat Semper. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Father. May God bless you and bless all our viewers. Thank you. 